First of all, peace and blessings, man. So I heard a statement today as I'm sitting here doing some YouTube homework, and I had a, a, a great mind say that that is most present is the least seen. I say that again. That that is most present is the least seen. So when I'm talking or when, when I'm out creating documentary and street photography images, there are so many layers to these images. So much stuff seems to be going on, right? But that complexity is the beauty of street and documentary photography. Not everybody's going to get it, right? Not everybody's going to get it. And I 100% know that while I'm out. I know that. My work is not for everybody, which is why street and documentary photography, it's a popular genre to get into, but it is a unpopular genre, especially on social media. And why do I say that? Let me light this up and then I'll tell y'all. So in the day and age of social media, we are three second consumers. What does that mean? To me, a three-second consumer is someone that is going to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. And if something doesn't catch their eye for more than 30, excuse me, three seconds, they're gone. They want something they can digest, see, understand in three seconds. And if it's too complex, they're gone. They're going to roll on to the next photo, image, video, whatever is there. And that is exactly why a lot of social media platforms have now transitioned to short reels, shorts, video that are short form, right? YouTube, it has, all, I'm not going to say died, but certain people cannot watch YouTube because the videos are too long. I get it, right? But I'm a person that wants to sit, watch, study, digest, break down, and then go out and try to apply. But street photography, documentary photography, when, 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 when I'm out and I'm taking these images with a scene, there's a scene, there's layers of people, there's a foreground, middle ground, background. You dig? And a lot of times in images, all those things mesh and they somewhat tell a story without me narrating the story to you. The image is meant for you to look at and come up with your own story after just digesting. It could be a story of the colors being the same. It could be the, co the story of uh, complementary and primary colors being the story, right? It could be juxtaposition of two people, two colors, two, whatever it may be. But that leads a lot of creators to stop creating complex images. How do I know this? Because I've posted videos, pictures, or whatever of a cat. Or I've seen pictures of a cat, a dog, a person, and they get thousands of likes, right? But if you post something complex that someone has to break down or you have to narrate and tell them what they're supposed to be seeing, they're not gonna watch it, man. They're not going to watch it. And they're not going to enjoy it. They're not going to appreciate it. That's why portrait work is so easy. Everyone knows a portrait is, the subject is that person. They don't want to sit and break it down and try to figure out the, the story, the meaning. They don't want that. They want easy. Easy peasy. That's what they want. Right? So it's, it's a very tough uh, genre of photography to get into, to perfect, to gain an audience because your audience has to be able to mentally digest that image and appreciate the artistic viewpoint, vantage point of what the photographer was trying to capture in that photo. 
But once again, it's not for you to try to figure out why I took that image. Come up with your own story when you're watching the image or looking at the image. Right? And that is the whole reason why art in a museum, there's there's not um, there's oftentimes, if you pay attention, oftentimes in, in galleries, there are benches in front of a lot of different pieces. Because they want the audience to come in, sit down, look, break it down, and try to figure it out. And come up with a story in their own mind. But today's social media has people wanting the creator to tell you the story. And it's all, a lot of times, that's how I, that's how I parent my, my children. Don't ask me every single little nuance of what it is I want you to do. I'm going to give you specific instructions. I want you to go and figure out how to achieve what it is I just asked you to do. If I give you every little step of the way, I may as well have done it myself. So why am I asking you to do it, right? And that to me is a lot of times what, it, what street photography and documentary photography is. It's a deeper meaning. I sit here and I look at it. Uh, Jordan Parks or Gordon Parks, I keep calling that man Jordan. Gordon Parks' work, beautiful work, beautiful, beautiful work. And I sit and I, and I, and I watch and I, and I go through books like Streetwise from Magnum. Awesome bodies of work. Awesome. But that's why if you pay attention to a lot of the great ones, they don't put subtitles. And they damn sure don't put captions in the, on their images. They may title it something but they let the audience come up with the story on their own. And that's the beauty of it. Because the person now is going to sit down and come up with their own story and digest it and, 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 and appreciate that image. Everyone in a room, I can take 10 people, put them in a room with one image, give them 10 minutes and bring them back together and say, what story did you get? And I guarantee you a lot of those stories are going to be vastly different. And I really enjoy that about my craft and the art of photography, right? And it's no different than that little exercise y'all did in elementary school. And I hope I'm not dating myself, but I like Liam, where they give the first person in the classroom a sentence. And then they say, pass it along, but whisper it in the ear so no one else can hear it of the next person. And the next person takes it, whisper it, and it goes all the way around. And by the time it got to the end, Man, that story was so different, everybody cracked up. Right? And, and it's no different than photography. And that's why I love it, man. I love going out and creating stories with my camera. I love it. I love storytelling. I love documenting our everyday streets. I love telling the ugly truth about what's really going on in the arteries of our streets. Right? A little anatomy. But the arteries are close. And the further you get out, you start getting veins, capillaries, and all these different things, right? A lot of us are so detached and so far away from the pulse of what's going on in our society, we have no idea what's going on at the heartbeat of our cities and towns. We, we have no clue. And sadly to say, some of us don't give up about what's going on downtown. They, people just don't care. It's so detached because we live in our own little worlds, our own little bubbles of complaints, gripes, I needs. And man, this is the time of year, man. Christmas is coming up, and there are some people truly, 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 truly out there struggling. Struggling. They are your true street warriors. You put them in a situation, and they're going to survive because they, they have no choice. Right? And it's almost like that, that analogy of a cat and a dog. A cat will survive without an owner. A cat still has that hunting instinct to go out and find food and prey. A dog will die right next to the feet of the owner because they're waiting on you to feed them. Right? So some people say, oh, I got that dog in me. You sure you want that dog in you? That means you can't survive without somebody feeding you. Right? That's why the lion is so powerful. A dog ain't powerful. Wild dogs out there in Africa ain't the king of the jungle. It's a cat. Because they're going to survive. They're going to feed. They're going to hunt. They're going to use teamwork. They're going to do all those different things. Right? 
So street photography, man, when you when when I go out, I look for a story. I look for those those gritty, just uh, emotional and heart wrenching moments to tell a story, so people can understand what's truly going on out there in the streets, man. Because it's not pretty. It's not. You can go out, and organizations can go out. Big dollar organizations can go out, hand out their blankets with their logos sprayed all over it, printed all over it, painted all over it, and drape it across a whole bunch of people. Just that's marketing. It's marketing. Now the the homeless and the the less fortunate are now walking billboards for that organization. And that organization dropped off blankets, some food, some crackers, some water, whatever, and bounced. But now they they fingerprint and thumbprint is all over the scene as if they really gave a about those people. They did. I'm not going to say they didn't, but come on. Served 21 years in the Army and basically from 18 years of the time that I was in the Army, a war was going on in Iraq and Afghanistan. It was four years, I think, four or five years that the last little bit of us pulled out of both of those two countries. But people still want to sit here and say, we pulled out too early. And I, man, look, them people come down there with their little humanitarian, humanitarian aid trucks, drop off a bunch of stuff, and they gone in a week. So who stayed, who left too early? Come on, man. Dig what I'm saying. Dig deeper to what I'm saying. Right? So an uh, image is very, can be very complex or it can be very simple. And that's the, 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 the difficult part with social media is that the easier you make it for the artist, the more traction you're going to get. Street photography and documented photography is so difficult but it's so rewarding because you're only going to really appease to those who understand what it is that you're trying to capture and what it is the story that you're trying to tell. Is it? And as long as you as creator understand that and stop looking at that like count, you'll be you'll be fine. Trust me, you'll be fine. Post it, share it, leave it. Turn off your notifications to it. Close the app. Detach from it. You've done your part. You have done your part. You have shared the story of some people or an event or your city. Let people digest it. Let people digest it, man. And you'll feel and you'll feel more rewarded. Because what I've started doing, I've captured those people and they understand me, they know why I'm there. I talked to a guy today named Antonio, and I, I and I really wanted him to understand and translate to the audience, the crowd of the refugees and the migrants and, and the immigrants that are downtown in El Paso. That I don't mean no harm. I am not there to exploit them. I am not there to plaster them all over the, the internet like, oh, 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 look at how jacked up. No, I'm trying to bring the right attention, the right eyeballs, the right company, the right organization, the right people to huddle up, gather around, let's put our heads together and see how we can help them, help the people, help the women, help the children. Help. It's cold outside, man. These people have no blankets, no shelter, no nothing. The church can only hold so many. The church can only hold and feed so many. The church runs out of food. They can only do so much. It's one church down there doing their heart, doing their damnedest to, to help those that are down there. They can't feed 2,000 people by themselves. They can't. So I, I try to plug in and, and, and offset some of that. That's all I'm trying to do. I can't help them all, but I need your help. If you're watching this video, you know me, you, man, reach out. Hit me in the DMs if you're local here in El Paso. If you're not local, I can set something up and try to get some funds and go out and buy blankets, food, diapers, formula for those that's living out there struggling. And it don't take long. It don't. 15 minutes. 15 minutes to gather up what you got, go to the store and buy some blankets, some clothes, some shoes, some diapers, some formula, drive down there, drop it off, wave, leave. 
15 minutes to feed your soul for the rest of the day and feed somebody else's souls and lives for months and a lifetime of memory knowing that people, there are some good people still out here who are willing to help. And that's all it comes down to, man. So I'm not going to get too long with it, even though this video can go for hours. I'm not going to keep it that long because I know some of y'all are already probably clocking out on me anyway. But I just want to share what it is I'm trying to do. I'm trying to elevate just from not being just a creator and a photographer, storyteller. I'm trying to be humanitarian to help those that can't help themselves right now. And I get it, not all of them mean good. I ain't stupid. But I'm also not blind to the fact that there are some people down there risking their lives. Man, I see women down there breastfeeding children that should be in school. But they have no food. Breastfeeding five and six year olds just to give them something. And if that don't strike a chord with you, man, I don't know what else will. Because I try to replace myself with seeing my wife and my kids down there living like that. And I can't. I can't. So my job or my purpose, my goal, aspirations is to help as many of those people down there as possible. And I know I can't help them all, but damn it, I'm going to help as many as I can. So... I, I'm going to sign off for this video, man, because my wife is right outside. I'm out my, my office door vacuuming. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I really appreciate y'all listening. Tune in to my work. Drop me some likes and some comments, man. And let's keep this thing rolling and see how big we can get this thing and how many people we can affect and, and help. I really appreciate y'all. God bless. And I'm out.